Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you all about dictionaries. So dictionaries are very similar to sets in Python. Now, if you don't know what sets are, pretty much they are a collection of unique elements. Okay, so it's a set is something that looks like this. So S is equal to and then curly brackets and like one, three, four, six, seven. Okay. Now, if you tried to add a duplicate element in there, you would see that if you print S, it simply removes that duplicate element. Now this is the exact same thing with dictionaries. They can have no duplicate elements, they're completely unique, and they're also unordered. And that's the same as a set. A set is completely unordered. Although it looks ordered right now, uh, it is unordered in Python's memory and in your computer's memory. Okay, so that's the same thing for dictionaries. Now I'm going to show you what a dictionary looks like. Pretty much it is a key value pair. So for each key, there is a value associated with that. Uh, and keys and values can be anything you want. So if I create a dictionary, Again, I'm going to use curly braces, except the way that I create a new um, item or like a new element in the dictionary is I give it a key. So in this case, we're going to do like apple and then I'm going to do four and I'll do like, I don't know, let's say pair five like this. Okay. If I print D, you can see we get apple four pair five. Now you may have guessed, but apple would be a key and four would be the value and then pair would be a key and five would be the value. And this is the way that you can create a dictionary um, kind of like in one line, like uh, statically type in all the entries. Now, obviously, there's a lot of different ways, and I'm going to go through that uh, just in a bit. OK, so now how do we access uh, these values or how do we access these elements? So in a dictionary, the way that we do this is not something like this, like D0, because we get key error. Zero does not exist. We have to do D and in the square brackets, we put the key. So in this case, if I wanted to access the value four, well, that's uh, associated with the key apple. So I would type apple, d apple, and you can see it returns a value of four. Now, dictionaries are very good because just like sets, um, operations are really fast on them. So the operation like in, um, index, uh, what do you call it, remove, append, those operations are extremely quick on dictionaries and on sets. And that's because likewise, they are unordered. And that's why we can do these operations so fast and why you don't use dictionaries. Now, again, if I do something like D pair, we get a value of five. Um, now I'll show you again, like what happens if I do D four. So four exists in my dictionary, but it's not a key. It's a value. So if I type D four, you can see we get a key error. So keys, just so you know, can they also don't have to be um, strings. They can be anything you want them to be. So a key could be a list, a key could be a tuple, it could be a number. So now I'm going to show you how you can add new things into the dictionary, how you can create new key values uh, pairs. Okay. So if I do like something like this and I say D and let's create a key, actually, let's make it a tuple, right? It's like a position two, three. Okay. And I say is equal to seven. So the key at two, three, uh, the tuple two, three is equal to seven. That works perfectly fine. If I check D, we get apple four pair five, and then the key of two, three is equal to seven. So that again shows us now that we don't have to have um, keys that are just one data type. We can mix data types. We can create them to be tuples um, and we can do all that kind of cool stuff. So yeah, if I access that key, we get D three, we get seven like that. Okay. Now, again, the reason we can do this and we can add a key like this is because dictionaries are mutable. So they are changeable in, uh, in the memory system. Okay. Now to clear a dictionary, we can do something like this, like D clear. And if we type D, we get an empty dictionary and that's pretty straightforward. Okay. So now I'm going to go into looping through dictionaries and kind of like why they're useful. So let's say, for example, we have a problem and I think I actually need to, need to create a new text file like this or a new file. And we want to count, uh, and store the count of every letter in a string. So I'm going to say S is equal to hello. My name is okay. So hello, my name is like this. And we want to count um, every letter in here and store it in a list and be able to access like the count of any single number. Now there's a few ways we can do this, but one way is to use a dictionary. So if I create a dictionary and say count is equal to a new dictionary, it looks like this with two curly braces. Now I'm going to loop through S. I'm going to say four L in S and that's, or let's just say like CHR for char. Okay. Or I actually have to type char for char in S. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to say if char in counts, all right, because we're going to use 
um, each character as a key in the dictionary, and then we're going to set the count to be the value when you access that key. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So if char in counts, what we're going to say is we're going to say counts char is equal to counts char plus one. Okay. Uh, let me just save this quickly so that I can run this. All right. And we'll say else. So if our character does not yet exist in our counts. Well, let's create a new count. So let's say counts. And then we're going to say char is just equal to one because we've counted that element now one time. So I'm going to run the program. And if I type counts, you can see that we get h equal to one. There's t e has two, l, two, o, one, m, two, y. And you can go through and you can see all the counts of each individual. Um, letter like this. So now again, if we want to print the count of each letter, well, we could loop through and print all the counts. Or we can say, well, we want to see how many times E shows up. So let's do this count E. And how many times does that show up? Well, that shows up two times in our count. And that's a really useful example of how we can use dictionaries. And there's tons and tons of other um, ways to use them that is really like really efficient. Okay. Um, so that's a really good way to use them. And yeah, so now let's go through a few more methods uh, of dictionaries and we can see how we can actually loop through them. Okay, so now that I've created this count, let's actually just loop through our dictionary and see how that works. So I'm going to say for um, key in counts and let's just print key. Now you can probably already guess what this is going to do, but pretty much when we loop through a dictionary, so we've created this dictionary counts after we've done this loop, what it does is it automatically uh, loops through each key and each key is going to be something like L O M. It doesn't loop through the values. So if I print this out to the screen, you can see that we get hello, my name is, and those are all the keys in our dictionary because it loops through the keys. Now, if we wanted to loop through not the keys, but the values, there's two ways we could do this. So for key and counts, if we wanted to print out the value, well, it's pretty easy. You could just do counts and then key like this. And that would simply print out the value because it's corresponding to each key. But another way to do this is to change this. I'm going to just change this to I for I in counts dot values like this. And what this does is get all of the values in the dictionary. And now it allows us to loop through it. So if we do that, now you can see we're getting one, two, two, one, two, one, and so on like that. So it goes through all the different values in our dictionary. Now, if we want to go through each key and each value, there is another little method that we can use that's really useful to do this, and it is items. So for i or for key, comma i in counts not value, we're gonna print key and then we're gonna print i. And if we print that out, you can see that we get h1, e2, l2, o1, m2, and it goes through and it gives us all of the different counts um, in our dictionary, right? And that's really useful. Okay, so now that we've been through those, let's go through like removing things from the dictionary and changing things that already exist. So you can see here that we've kind of already done it up here. We said counts char. Well, that's equal to whatever the count is of that plus one. And that, that means we actually changed the value of the key char, whatever that represented, um, to, and we added one to it. But other ways that we can change this is really simple. So we need to say counts, and we know that E exists, right? I can just say counts E is equal to 87. And now that means, well, if this already exists in our dictionary, we're going to replace it. If it doesn't, we'll add a new element in. So if we print or if we run this and then we simply do counts, you can see that E is now changed to 87. Now to change a key uh, is a bit different. The way that we need to do what we need to do if we're going to change the actual value of a key is what we need to store what that key is, what the value of that key is, and then add a new key with that same value and then delete the old key, if that makes sense. So say we want to change E to be like Z we didn't want E anymore. Well, what we have to do is figure out whatever the value of counts E is. So we're going to say V, uh, what do you call it? V is equal to counts E. Okay. And now we're going to del. Actually, we can't del it yet. We're going to say counts Z like this is equal to V. So now we've added in a new key that has the same value as whatever this key has. Now we can simply do this. We can say del counts E. Okay. So what we've done here is we've stored the value of whatever E is pointing to 
and then we've changed or we've added a new key into the dictionary, which is Z, and it's now equal to that value. And now we've deleted this. So I think this is going to work, but let's just try because we might run into an issue here. Okay, so now we're just going to do count. Okay, so there we go. So we have Z is equal to two, and we've removed the E key from our dictionary. And that's what you do if you wanted to like change a key. Um, so it has the same value, but the key is different. All right. So I think that is pretty much it for dictionaries. Um, there's not much else I could really show you. I could say, well, if you wanted to like uh, remove an item from the dictionary without doing that del, there's a way to do that. You can say d dot pop, and then just put in whatever the key is. So if the key was like a, then I could put a in there, and that would simply remove uh, that whole key from the dictionary. Anyways, I hope you guys learned a bit. Dictionaries are really useful and there's a lot of applications to using them. This has kind of been the basics. If you want like a, w a more advanced tutorial to showing like some more methods to using dictionaries, let me know because I'm happy to do that stuff for you guys. But anyways, that's been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in another video.